Welcome to the Orion X Download. This is a podcast where we discuss big ideas and big trends in high technology. Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Orion X Download podcast. We're going to have a chat with David Simmons from Oracle, but before we do that, uh, we've got Peter Folks here, one of our Orion X colleagues, whose blog instigated this session. What we did was a quick study of the cloud vendor landscape, specifically for enterprise IT. Peter's blog identified Oracle as a company that checks all the requirements, or at least comes closer than anybody else. So naturally, we wanted to go to the source. So what's the lowdown, Peter? It's interesting. At a high level, enterprise IT has a total mix of non-negotiable requirements. And it came as quite a surprise to me, but Oracle actually comes closest to accommodating all of them, Hmm. especially handling the legacy applications, which includes a significant mix of on-premises and off-premises solutions. Yeah, and it it seems like uh, it's working since just this last week they announced strong financial results uh, driven by cloud. Absolutely. And, you know, what came as a surprise to me is that if you go back to 2008 when Larry was potentially ridiculing cloud, and then I've looked at their quarterly financial reports since FY 2010, and Oracle is actually possibly the best proxy for enterprise IT adoption that's out there. And, you know, it started from nothing. They didn't even record cloud revenue back then. And now it's really coming on strong and it's been the leading element in their quarterly reporting. So it's a complete shift in Oracle's business from being essentially a software company. This is before they even bought Sun, so they didn't have hardware to now being a cloud vendor. And yet they're touching all of the critical elements of cloud. And it really seems to track the way the enterprise market is going, which is a little bit slower than some people predict. Yeah, cloud revenues, uh, about 9% of their overall revenue, which I think is probably pretty high, uh, even compared with others. I think it's doing extremely well. And honestly, you know, what has impressed me is that what Oracle has done is that They've stayed with the on-premises solution, which enterprise clients need. They've offered even doing cloud on people's own data centers. They have offered stuff to do in uh, outsourced data centers. They offer software as a service. They offer their own whole solution. So they've actually covered every base. And I honestly can't think of another vendor that's done that and over that period of time grown their company revenues by over 40 percent hmm good stuff well thanks peter uh let's listen into my chat with david simmons of oracle where i put uh, some of the same questions to him and see what he has to say uh today our topic is clouds And we're going to be talking um, with Dave Simmons from Oracle uh, and having a conversation about how uh, Orion X sees the market and how Oracle sees the cloud market. Uh, Hey, David, how are you? Hey, I'm great, Dan. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for being with us. Uh, Why don't you tell the the folks a little bit about yourself? Sure, Dan. Um, I work at Oracle Corporation, and um, I am in charge of all of the server marketing and our IAAS public cloud offering for Spark. Oh, okay. Okay, very cool. How long have you been doing that? Well, I've been with uh, Oracle for six years now. Okay. And before that, I was, at, I was at Sun Microsystems for almost 20. I remember those guys. So you've basically stayed with the same organization, but the organization has changed on you. Absolutely. It's been a wild ride. I'll bet. Very nice. So let's jump right into this and take a look at um, the slide where we're showing uh, terminal mainframe, sort of the era of the mainframe, PCs and client server coming in over the top of that, and then the, the modern era of, of smartphones with mobile and cloud. And if you, you take a look at this, it shows sort of the relationship between the system and the users. It was systems, IT shop, then users in the mainframe era semi-modern client server and pc era dominated primarily by x86 but also spark power alpha mips other processors in there 
and you had systems that were based on those various chips, then going through IT, then going to users in terms of, of sort of the uh, relationship between the, the uh, groups. And then today's era, where you have x86, ARM, GPUs, Power, Spark, FPGAs, AI chips, et cetera, et cetera, it's the chips that are going into the systems that are, that are purpose-built for that, then going through, a, a lot of cases, service providers and then users. Does this all make sense to you, David? It, it does, and, and in some ways it seems the, uh, the chips become you know, less uh, visible in terms of uh, their yes. importance, but in some cases they could be more important to the individual service providers in terms of the features they provide and the power and cooling efficiency, et cetera. And the software that they'll run. I mean, that was the big deal back in client server is having a chip that had all the applications on them. Absolutely, absolutely. And that was a killer for many of those systems. Uh, one of the things that r relates to Oracle that um, we wrote uh, early 2017 was um, predicting that some of the dynamics that have happened in cloud are helping Oracle, and as we put it, show a strong hand and get close to Google and IBM in terms of the entire cloud game. Yeah, I think that's consistent with what, you know, our own leadership team has been saying about who our biggest competitors are in the market today. And, and you know, Larry Ellison has been clear, you know, Amazon is who we're gunning for because uh, those big infrastructure providers are really where, you know, we see the, the, the game being played out and where we have an opportunity to come in, not only at the infrastructure layer, but at the middleware and at the application layer to be a leader. So, you know, I think you guys called it right back when you were looking at um, 2017 and what was next. But, you know, Amazon is a huge target. It's That's a huge behemoth for you guys to be taking on. What makes you think that you can, can um, pull away some market share from them? Well, I think... Um, if you look at our total portfolio, and I believe we have a slide later on here, you know, we have not only the infrastructure layer that we build ourselves, you know, we build the chip, we have the operating system, we have the, the systems layer that, and the virtualization technology. Uh, it's our own IP and we can, you know, optimize for uh, our infrastructure. But beyond that, with the database and the, the middleware layer and the application, we can integrate further and further up the stack provide the customer more value we can provide better optimizations and i actually believe we can provide a more efficient cost structure hmm. for service delivery when we build our own microprocessor we don't have to go buy it from a third party mm -hmm. okay okay well, let's drill down a little bit deeper on the next slide into the customers um for those people that are listening audio only, we have some columns here of small and startup, midsize and enterprise. And looking at small and startup, really when they're looking at the cloud, um, they have a product portfolio that may require some software development in the cloud, but otherwise they don't use the cloud an awful lot to run their business. Probably some piece parts here and there, and they're more likely to use the cloud to sell. Um, and since they're starting from zero, really their only problems are technical in terms of utilizing the, the cloud. In fact, it's a pretty positive economic exercise for them to use clouds when they're starting up. Uh, the story changes a bit in midsize where still they're probably using some, of some cloud, public cloud for software development, but a growing use of cloud, uh, mostly software as a service to run the business, and a mix of applications, and they might switch to software as a service as opposed to rewrite the applications they have. And it all depends on whether it's their IP or not as to whether it's a business problem that they're solving in the cloud or a technical problem that they're solving in the cloud. And when you get to enterprise, which are the customer sets that you guys know and love over at Oracle, it's very non-trivial, very large software development in most cases, a uh, very large user of custom applications and software as a service when it fits. They can't rewrite their apps. They really need to integrate new apps and software as a service if they're going to use the cloud. 
and they're solving business problems with public clouds, but also control problems in some cases. How's all this uh, shake out to you? Yeah, this is consistent with what we're hearing from our customers. You know, they have uh, a lot of interest and, in, in, you know, corporate mandates to move to cloud, and there's a whole sort of ecosystem of cloud uh, ready applications that they're moving, maybe their CRM systems and, you mm-hmm. know, some of their other, um, you know, infrastructure uh, type of tools. But when it comes to their business critical applications, many of them, many of our customers that we speak to don't have a clear path to the cloud. And the the problem is that they, they've, they're running these business critical applications um, in, in their business and they can't just sort of unplug and plug into a new cloud app. They've got no. you know critical data, critical business functions, and what they're really looking for is a bridge to the cloud. And this is where I think the Oracle value proposition is really exciting because uh, now that we have this Spark Cloud available, we can get these business critical applications standardized on Spark, whether they're running you know AIX or HPUX today. You know, it's a pretty simple migration over to a Spark platform. Mm -hmm. And then they can do lift and shift. They can do dev tests. They can run hybrid in our Spark Cloud environment with their existing business critical apps. So I think for the enterprise, you know, we have a very exciting value proposition. And, um, you know, we're getting a lot of interest from some of our largest customers. And, you know, we believe this is going to be a trend that we're going to see you know, you're going to see less on-premise purchases of some of our infrastructure, and we're going to see more and more um, adoption of our public cloud as we expand our service and more of our customers take advantage of the, the capabilities we have. What are they citing, the large uh, enterprise customers, what are they citing as their main reason for moving to a public cloud? Because for, for mission-critical applications, that seems a little crazy to me. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think I think the main thing, you know, the reason why, um, you know, it might seem crazy, and I, I'm gonna, you know, try to fill in the words for you, is that <laughs> there's a risk, there's a risk element of moving your business critical apps to the cloud that Absolutely. they're afraid of. They don't want, right? They don't want to have their um, their systems go down that run their critical apps. But you know, we have a tried and tested platform with a 20 year you know, heritage of reliability and availability. And so if you're going to place your bet on someone, if you're going to place your company's, you know, um, uh, most critical data and most important business functions uh, in someone's hands, why not do it in the, you know, the hands of someone with a long history of reliability and serviceability and, and um, being able to provide the service levels that you need. So, um you know, there there is that mitigation of risk. You know, a lot of customers don't want to operate data centers, run and manage and pay for and, and patch and, you know, um, administer these large internal data centers for some of their business critical applications when, in fact, they could buy it as a service from someone who's an expert mm-hmm. at running these systems, at running these applications, at keeping the infrastructure up and running. So there's a very attractive um, sort of uh, ROI mm-hmm. on moving over to a hybrid or a, or a full cloud model uh, for these for these customers, especially if you look at the scale of some of the, uh, the operations that we're looking at uh, supporting in our own data center, in our cloud, public cloud. Well, and I, I guess that some of this is brought out on our next slide where we're drilling down into the realities, the mindset, and the needs of enterprise customers. Uh, like we say in the in the column, the realities column, that they have lots of existing apps. They don't really have the resources, time, or appetite to rewrite them. And they have some complex government and compliance requirements. That's what they're facing up to now. Um, but they have to have a long-term view for many years. They need to preserve control, flexibility, and predictability, but they have a business to run. They're not in the IT business. And what they are yeah. really looking for is uh, a way to optimize those business metrics and to keep or seamlessly transform their existing apps if they decide to move to a cloud 
uh, make it work within financial and operational reality. And it's not really a matter of on-prem or off-prem, but sort of a flex-prem, right? That hybrid model. Right. And that's where I think it's going to break down that there's going to be uh, a hybrid model for most companies. Yeah, I think this this view for enterprise customers is spot on. Um, and oh, this great. Is Thank what you. We're hearing. Yeah, this is what we're hearing directly from our enterprise customers in terms of, of what they're facing and what their goals are, what their needs are. And, uh, you know, we, we believe we're in a, in a really great spot to deliver this. And we don't, you know, see any of our competitors out there that have the ability to deliver this business critical operation support, you know, at the application level to make sure that it still runs. And, you know, this, this cloud, we have this Unix uh, public cloud, the Spark public cloud. We're really the only uh, large vendor in the industry that offers that today. The other uh, vendors that you might be talking to, whether it's, you know, IBM or HP, they're going to force you to migrate to Linux. They're going to, you know, have um, a certain amount of, uh, of, of risk that goes into uh, trying to move all those business critical applications to a new platform. And what we're really trying to do here at Oracle is to make it simple and to make it, you know, secure and safe and to make it cost effective and to preserve that investment mm -hmm. that many of these enterprises have made. You know, these, a lot of these applications are homegrown and they're, sure. they're written in, you know, C++ and they've got, a, you know, thousands and thousands of lines of code and, you know, to migrate all that over um, to a new platform could be prohibitive and, of course, you know, very risky. So we're trying to mitigate some of that risk and expense with our new platform. Well, let's take a look at that. You brought up the competitive landscape. We did some research on that, and that's uh, on the next slide. We're taking a look at um, seven the seven biggest competitors in cloud right now. And if you look at, for instance, Amazon, they're offering infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. Google goes a bit farther into offering those, but also some software as a service. Um, none of, of those, neither of those two have any hardware, of course. I had Google a bit with Android, you could argue. Uh, if you look at micro, Microsoft, uh, they go very deeply into software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. Um, IBM has hardware, of course. They are offering infrastructure and some platform as a service. HPE and Dell uh, have hardware, and they do offer managed services and infrastructure as a service, but only Oracle does the whole Megillah, starting at hardware, going up through infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And that's a pretty good yeah. place to be. Yeah, this is a great slide. I, I love this one because it really does tell our story. You guys probably want to steal this slide, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm hoping <laughs> we can borrow this. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is perfect, and and it really does tell the story. You know, you've got the hardware vendors on one side, you've got the uh, the service providers on the other, and you've got Oracle right in the center uh, with the portfolio and the application space. Um, uh, in addition to the infrastructure space, and it really does put us in a great spot. You know, our challenge is, is building out enough capacity and ramping, you know, as fast as we can so that we can sort of establish a, a large foothold in the market and, you know, really compete head-to-head -head with the, the other providers. I, I think we're um, in a great position against the other hardware vendors, and we're already seeing lots of uh, success in terms of taking market share against some of those those hardware vendors in terms of, uh, of moving them over to the Oracle Cloud. Uh, I think where our really big challenge is in those very large, fast-growing, you know, service provider spaces like the Amazons where we really have, uh, you know, we have an opportunity to become a major player in that same space with them. And so that's why we're picking our battles on that front and, and making sure we're investing heavily to, to be a, a legitimate competitor in that space. Let me ask you something about your cloud services. Um, I'm within our little organization, a little bit more of a cloud skeptic than everyone else. I love public cloud or private clouds, but I'm skeptical about some 
aspects of, of public clouds. For instance, Amazon, um, I don't think that there, unless I was a massive organization, there's no way that I can negotiate SLAs with them. That if something happens, their fault, my fault, or but primarily if it's something that's their fault, they're going to give me a letter of apology, probably an email, and cheerfully refund my month's subscription cost. Is it possible <laughs> with Oracle? I mean, they, they don't have any any skin in the game. Amazon doesn't have any skin in the game when it comes to me and my cloud stuff. Does Oracle, do you have, can someone negotiate SLAs with you guys? Yeah, absolutely. And and I've heard clearly that Amazon has a, a very, very long, you know, contract that in the end doesn't hold them. It absolves them of any responsibility yes. if uh, if the service goes down. But uh, no, we, we absolutely do negotiate SLAs. And, um, you know, there's, there's certain customers that want, you know, three nines, four nines, three and a half, three and a half, four and a half nines, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, the, it, it is all negotiable. It has to be, you know, done on a case by case basis, but we do stand by our SLAs and, uh, we will, um, you know, we will assure our customers that we can meet certain levels of performance, certain levels of downtime. And um, security you know, and, and higher security, security if they need it, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we understand we are working with mission critical, business critical applications that you you can't just fly blind. There's no way you can go to a to a cloud service with your business critical applications and not have some level of service agreed upon. See, that's what would scare me silly. If you, you know, somebody suggesting that you do that with your mission critical stuff and entrust it to a provider that's not making you any assurances. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm sure it gets in. I'm sure they get the lawyers in and the legal department is very clear about, you know, what we can and cannot do. But I know that uh, part of our process, part of our negotiation is to clearly document and agree upon a service level. So, you know, I wouldn't go into a, a cloud services agreement without a service level agreement. Uh, I'm with you on that one. I don't even get my hair cut without an SLA. <laughs> Just saying. That's, that's why your hair looks so good. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, taking okay. a look at um, uh, some trends, and what we're seeing is that hybrid cloud is the future. That you're still going to have on prem, you're still going to have hosted private, but uh, hybrid cloud between private and public is the future. And uh, as you can see, according to um, the Sagatuck uh, Technology IT Infrastructure Survey that we borrowed the slide from, that um, we see hu- uh, hybrid on prem and public moving from around 10% of the companies out there to 33% of their deployments by 2019. And I think that makes a lot of sense. This does make a lot of sense. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons, I mean, I I really, this is another slide I really love and I'm probably going to borrow from you, um, is, is the fact that so many enterprises really are looking to have an on-prem and public cloud hybrid environment because of the need for uh, moving dev tests back and forth, being mm-hmm. able to do your, your development uh, in a cloud environment, and then you know maybe having um, uh, concerns about security or compliance where you want to do production on premise, mm-hmm. uh, but you still want to take advantage of cloud service for your development and for your tests, or maybe for DR, maybe you need to, to have a disaster recovery. Um, that all makes a lot of sense to me, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know what's so great about the Oracle approach is that we have the same architecture for our on-premises systems as we do for our cloud systems, and we actually have a, a delivery model, a, an architecture called Cloud at Customer. Mm-hmm. And what we do is we, we take the uh, we take the public cloud architecture, the same systems, the same rack configurations, the same software stack, and we will put it in at the customer site, and we will charge them to use that as a service. And so what they get is the benefit of a public cloud service, but on-premise in their country or their region. And Behind their, their firewall. 
behind their firewall, so it's more secure. It's okay, I like that. Compliance, compliance issues, yep. And and because we deliver the same architecture, it's very seamless in terms of moving data and moving applications and moving workloads well, from their pro- on-premise. They probably wouldn't know the difference. Well, it should be transparent. Yeah. It should be transparent given the, the systems management layers that we put in front of them. We try to give them a single pane of glass so that they can manage their resources, whether they're on-premise or public cloud, transparently. And really, that is the unique one of the unique offerings of uh, Oracle versus our competitors is that we give you these various consumption models. We give you the same hardware software stack on premise in the cloud or our cloud at customer. And so you have a very high level of confidence that things are going to interoperate seamlessly. And we're the only company that's doing that today. I kind of like that on prem cloud because I'm thinking that could cut a whole lot of management administration costs. Yeah, it's like it's like kind of like a, a managed, you know, on-site managed. Yeah, service, but kind of a really, best of both worlds sort of thing. Right, but you get the same architecture that you would in the public cloud, and you get the same sort of you know metering and charge back and the whole yeah. sort of uh, provisioning that you would of a cloud service on premise, and and the whole sort of opex versus capex model you can. Uh, you know, clearly uh, pay for it and use it as though it was a, a off-premise cloud, public cloud service. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, this has been a great discussion. I think we were in violent agreement as to where the market is going. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Orion's done a great job of, uh, of mapping out here where especially the enterprises are. I mean, we're not, we're not talking about every small, medium business. No, no. You know? coming through our Spark public cloud. But we are looking at many, many of our enterprise customers that are in a prime position right now with business critical applications on-premise, looking to move into the cloud. And if we can provide them a seamless way to get to that cloud, you know, they see the value and we're excited to have them. Well, excellent. Well, good luck with that. And thank you for being uh, the guest on our second show ever. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it, and uh, I hope we get to do this again. We'll talk soon. Thanks a lot. And thank you, everyone out there, for listening. This has been the Download with Orion X, or as we call it, the Orion X Download. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.